Uh, welcome to this uh, discussion around some of the films in competition program number 10, uh, Obatala film by Sebastian Wiedemann, excerpts one, though I now depart by Jorge Suarez Quinones Rivas, uh, and Labor of Love by Sylvia Schettelbauer. Um, there are three other films uh, in the program. Uh, if you've watched it online, Pseudo Sphinx by Anna Vaz, Amarillis, a study by Jane Parker, and Signal Aid by Simon Liu. Um, but unfortunately, they, they couldn't uh, join us today. Uh, but yeah, first of all, thank you, Sebastian, Jorge, and, and Sylvia, uh, for being here. Um, I'm really happy that even though we can't all be together in Pamplona, that we can be together in this um, digital space. Um, and and it's, a, I mean, and I think of all the programs, I mean, maybe, I mean, I think it is true for every program, but I think particularly this program is a program that should really be seen in the cinema. Um, and, 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 you know, I think many of like your films are uh, transferring knowledge to the spectator through pulsation and, and emotions and feelings and sensations. And like, I mean, it is, these are films that are, we're watching very much with our full bodies and not just with our eyes. Uh, and so I really uh, missed uh, being able to be uh, in, in, in the big cinema in Baluarte, in Pamplona, uh, w watching them. Um, maybe if we start by talking about the first film uh, in the program, Obatala film, which opens uh, the program and very much sets the tone for what's to come with uh, the beats in uh, in the soundtrack and, and the sense of, uh, you know, a ritualistic uh, ceremony, which I mean, being in the cinema is also like a ceremonial uh, and ritualistic, uh, you know, circumstance. So I thought maybe, um, Sebastian, if you could tell us about, uh, you know, what, what about the shooting of the film and then uh, the bringing of those images and sounds uh, together, um, you know, the encounter that like you, you're uh, proposing. And I mean, some of the clues are in the credits at the end, but it'd be nice to hear you talk about, um, you know, what you shot and what's like happening. Okay, uh, well, thank you, Maria. As you said, uh, yeah, that, that's right. This kind of films, and particularly Obatala film, is a film that we must see with, uh, full, uh, with all our body. Because indeed, I, I think that Obatala film is a possession film, you know? And uh, for now, I am working with the idea of a cinematic mode uh, of experience. In the sense that when I made uh, Obatala film, uh, it was uh, really an, an unexpected film. It was more a kind of a medium to intensify my experience with uh, the Orishas. The Orishas, the, uh, how to say, it, the gods from the Yoruba tradition and culture. And well, uh, um, I really, I am from Colombia, but I was living for a while in Brazil, where I I came in touch with with the Yoruba culture. Uh, in Brazil, it's very common, you know, this uh, connection with with African traditions. Uh, and well, I was invited uh, by at that time um, uh, Dada Fashei for his coronation as Oba, as king in Ilife, the, the holy city from uh, Orishas in Nigeria. And this was, well, a, a very special invitation that I can, uh, well, I, I, I must be there to, to the coronation. And as I said, it was an, an unexpected film. I just go to Nigeria, to Ilife, with my Super 8 camera, and uh, well, uh, during several days, I was visiting the temple uh, during the preparation for the ceremony. And what was more uh, powerful for me was the, the sound of the uh, sacred drums inside the, inside the temple. And well, I, I was uh, conviving during several days with this drum, with these rhythms, and also in the walls of the temple uh, were these beautiful paintings with white spots as a, you know, as a re representation or as, as symbols of Obatala, 
the, the origin of creation. And then uh, I realized that it could be possible to, to make a film. Uh, and it was uh, very important that it was a black and white film because I think that, that this uh, texture of the film could intensify this sensation that white is the, is the sacred color uh, of Obatala. And when I said it was more like an offering, like a gift, like a devotion act, uh, the film more than, you know, a portrayal of the culture or something like that. In this sense, for me, it's, it's, it's very, you know, a kind of resonance or connection with the film of Sylvia. Uh, that is, is a, a kind of immersion uh, and, and a kind of act of channeling with another dimension. In my case, I think it's, it's, it's a connection with this uh, spiritual forces that we can call Orishas, or even uh, a way to intensify what Yoruba calls as a she, as a vital force, you know, as, as key in, in a Chinese culture. Well, I can say that more or less it was uh, the way it, that has made the film. And what is very curious about the film is what happened with temporality in the film, because I think that in, in, in one level, uh, we can understand the film, you know, as a film outside time with this uh, sensorial connection and experience and as a kind of possession and a kind of trance uh, in this mythical time but it's very curious what happened with this film Brazil because this is like the film happens in the past and either uh, other people in Europe uh, think that ah this is found footage you know from I don't know uh, the last century but in but but what, what is curious is that in in this situation of the coronation of the ceremony ceremony uh, I was with my Super 8 camera, but all the people uh, were with uh, smartphones, you know, mm -hmm. uh, filming the, the, the situation. Uh, and in Brazil, they, they connect uh, the film with, you know, with ancestrality. But for, from the point of view of Nigeria, it is present, right? And, in, and then it's, it's very curious what happened in this, uh, how to say, transatlantic uh, dialogue. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I also wondered, was the first time I watched it, um, you know, for a while one wonders if it's, if it's like found footage, but I think maybe it's also heightened because of the way you display the whole film strip, you know, because you also present the, 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 you're not only presenting those images, you're also presenting the film object. You know, we can see yes. the strip, we can see the sprocket holes, we can see the dirt, we can... And then I thought about this, about this, you know, emphasized materiality, but at the same time, an emphasized materiality that is made possible by the digital medium, because it's because you've scanned the film that we can see <laughs> what we wouldn't be able to see if the film was in the projector. Because we, yes, we don't can... get to see... Yeah, yeah. We, we we can think that the, that the, there are small details, but that you say that they're very important because it, this is the traces that the that the film has its own life. That is not the representation or trying to be, you know, something transparent between the image and the reality. That film has its mm -hmm. own uh, existence. And in this sense, what is very important for me, and it is like a, a kind of delirium and fabulation or a speculation that I always uh, say is that uh, what uh, concerns me is uh, the people of the images, you know, as, as, as a kind of, uh, like I went to Nigeria, I, I was in relation with Yoruba people, but there are the medium, for channeling with the people of images. And, the, the, and these people is the people that live inside the film. And in this sense, uh, always uh, in my filmography as procedure, I, I, I must, uh, the images after the shooting must rest 
must rest and how to say it must sleep for a while and then i come i come back to the images as an archive as and then they i i can find an another life you know a second life of the images and in in, in terms of a creative process uh, the film was shot in uh, 2018 and it rests for a while and only uh, i think in um, july uh, 2019 i opened the box and find and, and 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 go again in relation with the images you know with with its materiality because as, as, as i said it, because as Sorry. I said, it, it was an unexpected film, and and, and, I, and I I was not sure if it will be, after all, a, a piece of work. You know, its first its first uh, sense was to be, as I said, as a, 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 a in situ a experience of of intensifying intensifying the experience of being with with the Yoruba people. Uh, and with its uh, spiritual forces, you know, it, it has its value uh, as a performative experience uh, there in Algeria, in Elife, and then you know, is is the piece, is the is the work, but it is it, it is another thing, you know. I wondered if, in relation to that question of like you know letting the images rest or letting the material rest. Uh, and that also that relationship to materiality if like uh, if jorge could speak about um his film where i imagine that maybe there is that certain that there is also that space of letting material rest and returning to it um and i mean and there are other ways that materiality is also emphasized and and i'm like very curious about the sound um because throughout the film we hear these like the same recordings like you know you repeating um, certain sentences and sometimes and the material quality of the recordings keeps changing and sometimes we hear the sound as as a recording of a sound that's being played and then re-recorded um, and so I guess that even like the, the, the sound seems to like um, suggest that there is this returning to material and making uh, sense of material and it also made me think of like the process of learning languages but I don't know if that is just the uh, um you know that like repetition and, and 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 making sense of things but i guess that process of going back through material that you shot years before is also a process of uh making making sense so was that how the film came about yeah uh, thank you for what you have said because it's really interesting and you have mentioned some key words like returning learning um, I shot. I have shot these materials for three years. I started uh, in 2018, uh, then I continued through 19 and 20, and now uh, in the beginning of 2021, it's when all the materials were like uh, completed. They existed. Those cartridges, those super cartridges, they were processed, and I could gather all of them. Um, that's when the sound uh, start uh, playing an important an important part because at the beginning during the shooting uh, I had I, I was not sure whether they would have sound or not but for sure there there was not the possibility to have like a synchronic sound because the super camera uh, I, I, there is no, no uh, sound anymore. So uh, I already lost, like, not lost, but I take for granted that for sure uh, the possibility of synchronic sound is not, po is not ever possible. So I started thinking uh, about the materials, watching them again, uh, as like in the line of what you were saying, like revisiting the materials, re-experiencing the places and the people that I filmed. and. I realized that there was no sense of creating like a, a how, how can I say, like a realistic sound or to use the maybe the sound recordings I took uh, during that time because I had some recordings, but it was no sense. So I decided to 
to to let the line of the structure uh, go and uh, those poems came to my mind the possibility of using uh, this anthology of Japanese poetry uh, that I was working with for another project and um, it is like a big compilation of different topics mainly the the passing of seasons like summer autumn poems etc and then there is like a small a small chapter uh, devoted to partings like to farewell saying goodbye leaving a place and that was somehow like the feeling i was getting from my own images when i was looking at them again like three years later so i really feel like a connection so i I sent to the lab the five cartridges together in a whole uh, reel, but without any editing, and they they stripped for me like that so that I could use it for magnetic sound recording. And with my own projector, I was like everything was like a, this kind of movement. Like I was watching the film again, and I was with the microphone and speaking on the film, reading in stopping um, you know so i think that this kind of process of rewatching rewatching is somehow in this kind of sound layers that you were mentioned yeah because it feels that it's more about yeah remembering or revisiting a journey rather than it being a realistic account of of a, of a journey i mean i think also you know that it um you know, we we know where you are clearly when we see Mount Fuji, which is like, um, um, you know, I guess like sort of necessary if you're doing like a, a travelogue in in Japan. But but there are like, um, but the film is also ambiguous about the locations where you are, and sometimes it's very hard to read the image. I mean, the the graininess is so emphasized. There are moments I remember like looking at a image and thinking is that the sea is it the sky is it a mountain and then we see a little sailboat and the little sailboat becomes like the index or like we it tells us like that that we're looking uh, at uh, at the ocean and so maybe yeah like how um i mean there is i think that big difference between the film which maybe relates more to that process of you know that you were describing of rewatching it and re-recording and um then then to the actual to the actual journey or how do you see the relationship between you know those different parts of the process like like the, the filming whilst you're traveling and the like watching when you're at home yeah the as, as you say uh, suddenly we are in japan and there is like a record of just one frame and we are in japan in 2018 and suddenly we are in la in 2019 so uh, that i know that is happening but in fact it's not important at all because the scale of the image is is one kind of scale that it could be anywhere but at the same time uh, there is a feeling that there is a travel because everything is moving uh, sometimes there are some very explicit locations as you say like Mount Fuji or you see someone with a different with like the kind of visual characteristic in the face that maybe it's the Japanese or uh, Asian people so yeah um, there is a kind of a uh, play with the different scales that uh, you don't uh, always know if you're watching a detail or a big uh, like a situation shot yeah and um, but I am rewatching uh, I kind of get to understand again my own material and see like this kind of line that goes through everything because at the beginning i was just filming uh, excerpts like fragments of time and space and they were not connected at all but it is in that precise moment of watching again and thinking about the sound like a continuous line and i think if there is a continuous line in the film is this idea of of remembering but my my how can i say my my wish as a as a filmmaker is that it's not only remembering like about the past but uh, making present again 
uh, a moment, and maybe that was lived two years ago, but during the time of projection, with the Super 8 projector and the film going through the hall, with to have in present again, to revisit in present this experience, this moment, and share it with the audience or anyone. When we're talking about yeah, that, um, you know, those jumps in geographies are like trying to grasp where you are. And then I was thinking that like when watching Sylvia's film, uh, there are all these amazing images that, you know, you think, oh, that's like a mountain. Oh, it's the ocean. No, it's a woman's face. Uh, it's the forest and all these images that are sort of, um, you know, all these different uh, images at once. Uh, and I guess, you know, this is something that you've done in previous films, but I think that here it like reaches like new, new heights. Um, and, you know, Jorge was talking about uh, journey and your film is like this like cosmic, uh, cosmic journey. And also, I mean, I thought it was really yeah, beautiful how Sebastian connected your two films because they do have this, you know, the same possession um, feeling, but um, I mean, I think what's amazing is how you get that same, you know, beat that we get in, in Sebastian's film, but not through sound. It's like the images that are that are beating or that are, you know, pulsating because the sound itself uh, is is much quieter than than the images. Um, but I don't know. Does talking about it mystify? You know, what's actually like a very mystical experience? I, I, I. I I mean, I, I don't know how I would cope with watching your film in the cinema because even just watching it on my computer at home was really, really intense and amazing. Um, um, yeah, I, I really, so when I watched the um, films before our talk today, I, I noticed the journeying and I was really um, happy or pleasantly surprised that that is kind of the context um, in which this film is shown because of course, um, life or love is part of a journey or journey, you know, it's kind of like an internal. And I really appreciate how Sebastian said that um, this is about accessing another gen. Like I, I hadn't actually thought about it, about my film in that way. And, but it's true. I, I immediately understood. Um, and, and um, in that way that it is a little bit of a transcend, like a transcending thing or something, maybe, I mean, not in the way I originally con conceived of the film, but, um, that's kind of like the abstraction kind of helps um, think of it or think of it in that way, I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I guess um, this is the most abstract um, piece I've made um, using the flicker and the strobing and the music, and it works differently um, in that um, it was important to me that it's all abstract or it becomes abstract so that um, you don't really recognize place or time anymore and um but what i did want and what's in there is definitely um um i mean of course there's the ocean and there's trees but it's connected or it's interwoven with um footage that shows the interior of the human body so you would have for example whatever looks like the roots of the trees or in this where, where i talk about the trees those are actually that th that's actually an old animation I think from the 70s that shows um, the, the the nerves um, or an animation about how um, synapses connect and how energy flows through the nerves in, in within the human body um, and I like that how how that kind of looks like tips of trees like how the human nerves kind of you zoom into them look like those rhizomes of trees and and that kind of made a nice associative or metaphoric connection um, and there's also of course veins like the inside of veins and there's uh, blood um, blood cells and there's the brain of course very very recognizable um, yeah uh, so that's kind of one level so in that way it is um, um, is kind of like a journey, both with like an aff affective journey, like a, an emotional journey, but it's also a kind of like a little bit of a visual exploration. Um, and, and in that way, I really like that notion of the transcendence um, or accessing another dimension, whether that's um, yeah, intellectual or emotional. Um, but yeah, I think when I started making the film, it was very much about, um, about exploring a notion of love and, 
and a realization of, of a very, very minute, of course, love is so complex, you know, I, I could never um, like put the entire complexity of love into a short film, but I did want to focus on um, small aspects. Um, and there are several, one of them, one of them is that feeling like when you when you are with somebody when you connect with somebody you feel like you know now like the current moment expands and it's suddenly you're grounded in that current moment kind of like in meditation i guess but um when you fall in love or in those first moments then that seems so effortless and and it feels like it's gonna last forever or, or that sense of nowness i mean it can also happen later down the line but um that was something i was interested in and of course like a kind of a um like an exploration of the euphoria maybe um, that some people perceive as some kind of you know psychedelic ride or something but that's thinking that's kind of in there um, but i was also very interested in exploring very open or exploded ideas of not just the romantic you know connecting between two romantic lovers but also um very very different like i think that when you listen to music or or when you receive or when you watch art and you understand art, that's also kind of like an act of love or, um, you know, the whole sequence about the, you know, what goes on, the processes that go on in nature um, with trees or other communities or other, other concepts of kinship um, and care. I think um, I, I just kind of like to ca kind of explore different, different ideas. So that's kind of there conceptually, whether you see that or not. I mean, at the end of the day, um, everybody can see what they want to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of what I was exploring, I guess. Um, but yeah, the zooming into the seconds, like the zooming into that minute feeling um, and exploding it in that way visually, that was kind of my idea or um, I guess. But it's yeah, like so it's powerful because we're both like zooming in and out at the same time. I mean, you know, that like movement both towards the inside of the body and towards the cosmos and like the, the two contradictory, I mean, which I guess is what the, the strobe, um, the strobe does. But uh, maybe could you talk a little bit more about, you know, the, the choice of word labor, because, you know, now when you were describing it, you were saying acts of love. Uh, but labor is something much more uh, specific. And so that relationship between labor and love that you're implying with the title. <laughs> yeah, that's um, first before before I talk about that, I, I really like how you mentioned the cosmos because I am um, at the very end, of course. Um, I mean, we do have shots of nature and the butterfly and, and, you know, ocean and trees and all of that. But at the end, there's actually a zooming out from the earth. You know, I mean, you don't really see it because I thought if it's too obvious, then it's a little, you know, um, a little too much. But it's in there. So I like how you mentioned the cosmos because I it's I kind of put that in there somewhere. Um, yeah, um, labor. Well, I mean, you know, everything is work, isn't it? <laughs> even even love is work so and i kind of like the the word game or the you know the notion how i mean it has it points to a kind of a feminist notion and it, it kind of points to the fact that um like a relationship is work but it also points to that like a little bit i mean i don't like i don't like the notion of well experimental film is a labor of love but it's of course also in there. So everything, everything, all the possible meanings that you might associate with them, I'm a, I'm aware of them because I've thought of it long and hard. I this was the first title I immediately knew I wanted to use. Like even it's very unusual to think of the title even before I finished the film. But before I started the film, I knew that was gonna that I wanted it to be the title. And so I had a long time to think about talk to a lot of people. So I, I know how you can re read it and I'm aware of it. It's you know, um, it is, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, a lot of the things you were saying, um, also, I think, you know, uh, connect or there, there is echoes with uh, how Sebastian has uh, talked about his film. I, um, yesterday after like watching all the films, I was reading Sebastian's text uh, for uh, Corrientes for like the, 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 the website where the film was shown a few months ago and, and Sebastian wrote this really beautiful text uh, and you talk about, you know, making films as the tangible encounter between bodies. Um, and again, I, I brought, you know, these questions of making uh, visible the, the invisible. And I think that's very present, you know, in Sylvia's film, that question of like visibility and visibility and, and connecting uh, that encounter, or like those, uh, you know, connecting um, 
body. So I wondered, Sebastian, if you would want to like, you know, hear for this discussion, articulate some of those ideas of like, you know, cinema as encounter and like that particular film as a way of, I mean, you talked about, you know, that encounter between uh, Brazil and, and Africa, those like, th there is that encounter between, I like, guess, the images that you shot there and, and maybe images that you shot elsewhere, but then the, the, I guess the encounter that happens through watching the film. Yes, well, um, like a continuation or even continue this resonance with, with, with Sylvia, I think that this question of making visible the invisible is also a question of, uh, you know, playing with uh, different uh, scales, right? Uh, the, the, this thing of zooming in or zooming out. And in that case, even if we, in the film, we, we, we can see uh, these human bodies, for me, uh, after a while, I understand what interests me is uh, like a more than human condition uh, that cinema can uh, create, you know? And, and, and this more, more than human experience uh, is, is concerned with, with this, with these la labors of uh, sensations, right? Not, not, not only love, but, but uh, this process of, of affectation of effects uh, that uh, go beyond uh, our, you know, our scale, our human condition, and sometimes it could happen through um, a real uh, materialistic condition, uh, like you know, as as we as we saw in Sylvia's film, that the brain or the the images from the side of the body, but also uh, with other things that normally are not visible, like uh, this idea of ashe of uh, spiritual forces. And in this in this sense, uh, perhaps uh, cinema works like a you know, like a device for connecting not not only images but what uh, rests between the images in this interstices that is uh, sometimes and here speaking and try to think with uh, the the idea of ifa you know also this or uh, of their mystery. Uh, and the secret that the, 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 there is something that is secret, but that we all always try to discover, but we, we never are, are able to finish to uh, to realize a whole image of the thing, right? And, and, and is this like, uh, like like cinema is always or or the images are always working with something that is is fugitive, you know, is escaping all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time, and and and, and in this sense, is is not the the idea of of uh, arriving to a point where we finally uh, can make visible the things. It is a continuous process that, that uh, never ends, never ends. And in this sense, yes, because it is an an habit. We say image, but uh, my, but uh, in my thinking, my thought image is what always is to come no and 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 this is, we, we we can make a you know a, a differentiation uh, between visualities and sonorities or or sonic and visual materialities and the image as as a concept of something that is always to come and and, and because the, this this inquiry or this research is, is, is this, you know, going, following this invisible, following this invisible that's in Obatala film, uh, you know, have this uh, spiritual quality, but in, in, in other films that's that may have other conditions, right? But always in this, in this mood or of a more than human experience. Because when you talk about the, that image that is to come, I mean, because like, there is that strong sense in in your film of, um, you know, the difficulty of grasping. Like, you know, we, we we're like very quickly moving between images, um, and 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 so we can't really hold 
the image, but maybe that like that's what you were referring to this impossibility of uh, beholding, which I guess in 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 Sylvia's film it's also this constant transformation of the image, and we might like um we might think we see an ocean or a mountain, but then it becomes uh, something else before we've been able uh, to articulate it. And I wondered if that's also what's happening in Jorge's film with the with the language and with the, you know, the repetition. And I think also when you're, um, um, you know, recording your own voice in like foreign languages, if that, if part of that, like, you know, repeating those poems or learning a language, if it, it has to do also with that impossibility of like grasping that, like, you know, uh, mysterious or impossible to grasp meaning or like that meaning that's like, you know, uh, that you can't access and that you try to access through through repetition. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I, I, I said earlier that like that, like that. It did made me think of that like process of like trying to learn a foreign a foreign language. Yeah, I think that uh, I work with repetition, but well, I end up working with repetition because there is always this this uh, this tendency towards like not getting like a final image, a final meaning, but rather to be always in the process of, of, of rethinking, reshaping. So I think that I have this tendency towards repetition because there is some kind of, of knowledge that can only be experienced in the present moment of saying the word and I think these poems are so uh, like banales, like so from the daily life. They are very uh, like so normal, let's say, but at the same time, they have like this aura of mis mysterious. And as you say, like there is this tendency of uh, repeating because I cannot grasp the meaning. So there is always the hope of working again with words, with images, with sounds, in order to be able to have like a more um, deep connection with with the with the meaning in the proper forms, in the not only like in the lexic terms of the words, but also even in the, the formal aspects of the phonemes and the connection between different syllables in the Japanese, for example, poems. So yeah, and the attitude toward the image is also a little bit similar because I, as you were saying, Sylvia and Sebastian film, there is like these uh, things uh, going on and you try to grasp a little bit of it. So the camera, uh, I try to have this like in order to interact with the present that is living, that is always going uh, forward, but for a little bit of second uh, through the camera, you have like intense feeling and connection with what is uh, in front of that. In my case, I think that if I, had, I didn't have the camera, it wouldn't be so intense. I think I'm being told that we are beginning to, I mean, we're sort of running out of time, but I just wanted to give Sylvia the chance to also respond to that idea of like um, this impossible image or this like uh, ungraspable or or that like you know co eternalism or like never-ending movement uh, in, in your film or if you've got anything to respond to what Sebastian and Jorge were just saying. Well I have to admit that um, I had some technical issues I just rejoined you <laughs> and unfortunately oh. I didn't hear what Sebastian and Jorge said but I can say that um, I think um, I can very much, of course, rely, uh, respond or relate to the idea of an impossible image or not having the quite the right image. And so in that way, I think my film is translate um, certain feelings or certain abstract notions that, you know, you can find metaphors for. Um, and, and in that way, I think maybe it, it, it kind of adds another notion or another angle or something like that. Thank I hope you. That's um, I yeah, I'm sorry you you. Uh, I'm sorry you missed uh, that, but I guess you'll be able to watch it. 
and then you'll know what you know Sebastian spoke I mean everyone spoke about your film whilst so you were not with us <laughs> yeah, I, I had to restart the computer <laughs> oh no um well, uh thanks thanks so much uh thanks to everyone for making the effort uh to to be here today uh and for like you know sharing words and thoughts and feelings about your films and about each other's films it's like been really like a pleasure to speak to you thank you thank you, thank you.